Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Integrated Entrepreneur. I am here, Jonathan, with my co-host, Keith. Keith, what's going on, big dog? What's up, bro? Just another Monday of slaying the day, dude. How's your week? Stacked week? up, ready for Thanksgiving? I'm stacked up through Wednesday, and then even Friday, my calendar is full. So yeah, same here. the only day I'm shutting it down is Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's it. And I probably won't be able to shut it down the whole day. I'm sure somebody will need to talk to me. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and here's the thing. Like, this is separation season. So this is when other people pull back. Your competitors pull back. This is when you push forward and lean into it. One of the biggest things I never understood was dudes and fucking, hey, man, it's, it's December, bro. I'm just going to coast. I'm just going to coast to the finish line and let everyone whip my ass in the last half of the 12th yeah. hour. Or they sandbag deals. Yeah. Which drives me fucking crazy. Yeah, that shit is wonky. And you always know who does it, too, because like by the 3rd of January, they're up on the scoreboard at fucking 900000 of production or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> always. Yeah. It's the same people that think it's a strategy. What happens if you finish strong, got referrals from those people, and then carry that momentum into January? Yeah. It's crazy. Exactly. But yeah, it, you know, shit happens in every... And it, it's not even just in sales. It's everywhere, bro. It's, a, yeah. it's in every fucking business out there. It's funny. But yeah, dude, I'm stacked through the end of the week too. I'll probably, like I said, work a little bit Thursday. But to your point, over, overachieve, man, and align for the next year and, and carry that momentum into the year is much more yeah. much more frivolous on... on uh, sandbagging sucks, Right. And you can do that, but you, everyone knows your shit, but uh, grinding through the end of the year has always been my motto. Plus I just can't not work, dude. You're fucking I crazy. I enjoy so, what I do. So, but dude, that's a good segment into kind of what I thought we could talk about today. And, and it's really been prevalent lately and it's stuck to me in multiple scenarios and conversations, but Talking to people in the past that are like heavily involved in scaling and growing and the chaos and the bullshit that is involved with that is getting out of your own way and giving up ownership of your business and learning how to not be the one that wears all the hats. But that's absolutely backwards from what we've known in entrepreneurship, our entire business run, if you will. So the, yeah. so the, the comment that came up and was sticking to me, and I actually think I might try to utilize this legally down the road, but the hustler must die for the CEO to emerge. Yeah. And dude, when, when I, when that came out and it came up in conversation, it just stuck. It was one of those sentences like, man, this sentence carries so much fucking weight. And can this, we could talk on this for seven years. There's so yeah. much to unpack. Yeah. Right. So when you hear that, the, the hustler must die for the CEO to emerge. What, where does, it take, where does it go? Where do you go with it? Where does well, the first thing you're thinking of? For you to build a real company, you can't do everything, okay? Everyone does everything to start. But for you to build a company that's worth anything, okay, you have to have systems and processes and an actual foundation. So this is really about laying the foundation. And the only way to lay the foundation is to act like a CEO, not the main sales generator. And this does take time. You're not going to start business day one and walk into this because most people don't even know how to accomplish this to begin with. And, and the few that do and understand what we're saying, they know it takes time and it's a process. It's a step-by-step -step process, right? And I'd like to walk some of you guys through that journey as best we can on this show to, to really help you guys. So I think it starts with figuring out all the things that you do and then creating SOPs, standard operating procedures for each. How do you do that? Everything you do, you need to document. So let's say my highest and best use of time is running the company and then speaking to my VIP clients only. I have to figure out a way for other people to do all the other things I do, whether it's marketing, selling, paperwork, okay, processing. And how do I do that? The problem is if you bring somebody in day one, and Keith, we've all done this, we think we found the next rock star, we think we found the perfect processor, or we found the perfect ops manager, you train them. And all of a sudden, 
for whatever reason, they decide to leave or they're not doing a good job and you have to rehire them. In that scenario, guess what? You have to retrain and you're starting. And now you're picking up all those responsibilities that they have. Okay. And this is a negative cycle that most operators get in their business. And the only way to fully avoid it and make your life much easier is you need SOPs for each position in your company. And you should have them in place before you actually make that hire. All right. And then what you need to do is document those SOPs. You can write them down. And I would also suggest doing video. And then that video and that description or that writing has to live somewhere. Okay. Where do you host it? If you have go high level, you could host it there. If you have train you or Kajabi, you could host it there. And now anytime anyone comes in for that position, they can watch some videos, read everything, do it themselves step by step. And guess what? If they need anything from you, they can ask, but at least you have it. So you don't have to constantly duplicate those efforts. Okay. It's about working smarter and hard, not just smarter and hard. Yeah. Yeah. So you bring up some points here. Let's unpack that as a new business owner. And this is for you guys just coming up in business or fuck, maybe you're a couple years in and you've just been hustling your ass off and you haven't done any of this. The very first thing you need to do is you need to write down every silo of your business, sales, marketing. If there's construction, you have project management. If it's roofing, you have fulfillment and whoever's taking over and, and making sure insurance claims are done. But dissect your, your business into action item silos and then go within each silo and determine what steps are made on a daily basis to make that silo tick. And so let's just use sales, right? And let's say you're an inbound sales and you answer the phones. You need to put yourself in the position of that person answering the phone and write down step by step what you need that person to do to make sure that they move that client through the cycle of sales. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to make a standard operating procedure. You simply jot down those steps. If you want to be real lazy, you take those steps and you throw it into chat GPT and you tell chat GPT to fill in the rest so that you can be 80 to 90% done with an SOP in eight seconds on chat GPT. Then you just need to put your personal touches on it. The second component to that is probably one of the most, inve the, the best investment I've ever made is into Loom. Using Loom, when I have something that comes up in question, I literally can press a button on my computer and film myself walking through the steps online on the internet and wherever on word documents, the whole nine yards and create your fucking training manual on video in one shot, mm -hmm. upload that shit to your host. And to your point, it's like, we're eliminating future time. You may not eliminate time today, putting it together, but you're going to eliminate hundreds of hours in the future, not having to re-answer the same damn question or go over and show Susan, who's in the fulfillment department, how to, to take an invoice from this department to this department, whatever mm -hmm. it is, the quicker you can get into the process of, all right, I'm going to build a training manual. No one really has to come to me in the future. Oh, Jesus. It's a game changer. Yep. Right. So it, it sounds daunting. A lot of people are like, oh my God, what's an SOP, right? Cause when you abbreviate things, it becomes 10 times harder to understand. Right. So the reality is as the entrepreneur with the with nose to the grindstone, just take a step back and maybe spend an hour or two hours a week on writing down these independent things and, and putting it in, in some kind of packet. It doesn't have to be pretty, just has to answer the question. So we're doing that a lot with a bunch of clients right now because, and that's what happens in this season, right? Most companies are slower because everyone's buying their kids shit that they don't need and will never play with after January 1st. Yeah. Right. Spending all the money and, and Christmas. Now is the time to sit back and do that if your business ultimately is slow anyways. It's forced. So why not utilize the time to make sure January one's off and popping? Yeah. And what you should do is I think the best way to plan this is look at maybe create an org chart. Okay. And plan out what positions you're going to need and then build everything out position by position. And when you're ready to hire, you step them in and see how they operate and how they work. And if they're having trouble, you either go in and adjust the training or you have the wrong person in the wrong seat and don't discount. You might just have the wrong person in the wrong seat. Right. Okay? 
which is super important because you either have to get them off the bus or find the right seat for them. And here's what's going to happen. At first, it's going to be difficult. And that's just going to get easier and easier. And then the reason why you guys really want to do this is at some point, if you're trying to sell your company, no one's going to buy a company with that doesn't have this, okay? Like if I were to try to sell Integrate and I didn't have any of this, someone would either have to put golden handcuffs on me to make me stay on until I do it and until they can operate the company without me, or they're just not going to buy the company, or I'm just going to get peanuts, pennies on the dollar for it. Right. All right. So the goal here is to make your company and everything you're building scalable, where you can go in and have somebody do this stuff almost right away. Yeah. Okay. And I've done it. I've done it with, I've done it client facing and I've done it team facing where I know that if somebody watches the stuff, they're ready to go. And it's just trial and error like anything else. Yeah. All right. And that I think is the first real step to killing the hustler and becoming a CEO. Because most people skip this step and they don't realize why they're not having success or why it's not working. And the problem is they're either not doing it right or they have the wrong people. Yep. It's the thing, like the very first thing, dude, if I could do it all over again, I would read rocket fuel and traction in the first week of business ownership. Mm -hmm. And then I would implement that shit in the second week of business ownership. Yeah. Right. And, and if you're further along in business and you're like, man, I'm established and I'm a, I've made some good money, et cetera. Cause there's some people out there who make a shit ton of money being the hustler and, and can figure yeah. it out. Dude, the very first hire I would ever make if I was already established and could afford to hire someone immediately would be the COO to then, mm -hmm defer all of these things to and let them build the SOPs and make the loom videos and do all that shit. Yeah. Right. And guys, yeah, so that's the reality. It's all about what you can defer the SWOT analysis. What do you like and not like? Let's determine the shit you don't like and, and figure out who we can delegate that to. Yep. And, and I'm going to add, I'm going to add to that. Yeah. The, this is an uncomfortable part. And I can tell you, I've proven you can do build a seven figure business. No problem. Hustling, okay? I don't think you can build an eight-figure business hustling. Guys, I'm just being real with you. I don't think if you don't have these stats, I don't think you're getting to eight figures unless you're selling something that is super high ticket. It doesn't take a lot of sales to get there, okay? Then after this is done, you have to figure out what tasks you're doing, okay? And this is an exercise you guys can do each month, each quarter, each year. However you want to position it, it really doesn't make a difference. Where you want to write down all the things you worked on each day for, let's say, a week. The longer you go, the better it'll be. And then you have to assign a dollar amount to it. What do you think it brought the company in or you in per hour? Okay. And then you have to figure out how much you are actually worth per hour. What do you make a year? So if you make 500,000, let's just say, and it's 52 weeks a year times, if you're bringing in 500,000, I'm gonna assume you're doing 50, 50 hours, okay, a week. I don't know too many people that are doing it for less, okay? But that's 2,600 hours. So if you're working 2,600 hours, you just take the 500,000 that you're making, divide it by 2,600, and you make $192 an hour, all right? So now you have a baseline, and that baseline is set. And anything that is gonna bring in less than $192 an hour, guess who shouldn't be fucking working on it? Yeah. You, yeah. okay? Which means then you guys can go out and any of those tasks that you have, okay, for that make less than $192 an hour, you should try to hire people and delegate or outsource. Now, here's now, the thing, though. You can't just be a lazy bitch and not work after that just because you have employees. Yeah, you got to yeah. continue making shit happen on the sales side of the world. Because sure. you can up really quickly if you don't. I was at the summit. And one guy said, hey, I'm... I basically removed myself from my business. What should I be doing? And the answer was clearly sales and business development. 
and it wasn't particularly close, right? And everybody that heard this basically said the same thing. How are you not doing that right now? Right. We're just going to a, we're going to assume that if you're listening to this, you're someone that is dedicated to consistent improvement in yourself and your business, and you're not going to coast. Okay. But this is a good exercise that actually adds one other layer to killing that hustler and becoming a CEO. And if you can only work on tasks that are $192 an hour or more, guess what? You're going to make a lot more money. And then guess what happens when that, then that bar gets raised. So now it's probably not going to be $192 an hour. It'll probably be $300 an hour activities. Okay. Yeah. And that's the name of the game as you're growing and as you're trying to scale. Yeah. And without looking at it like that and building the foundation, you're always going to struggle. What do you think on this, Keith? It's that's the way that I had to do that. That's the exercise I used to actually jump from all hats to just a few hats. Yep. And it's funny you mentioned that the when you do a year over year analysis after you make that breakthrough decision, dude, my shit 3x my yep. hourly rate of shit. And the reality is I was able to delve in 100% on growth of the business and forward thinking because here's the deal. We get derailed if we try to handle too much of the shit, dude, how many times a day do you get derailed on the minuscule shit? And then you think that's the most important because Ralph is pissed off that something took a day longer than it was supposed to. And now you've given up the entire seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 hour day on pushing the fucking cart forward and you're in stalemate back here dealing with shit that someone else should be dealing with. So it's the hardest decision you'll ever make is taking yourself out of the role of making all the decisions. But it's the most, it's the most income producing decision anyone can make. Correct. We just can't get the fuck out of our own way to see that. And so it takes a little while for us to do it. And once we do it, we're like, fuck, what took so long? Right. Yeah. It's just, the, it's the conversation that we have, but I agree. Most people get hung up in that and, and they wonder why they're in stalemate. They wonder why they can't grow to that next level. We see it all the time in companies that are going from three to 5 million and that five to 10 is a, an ass whipping, right? For whatever reason, three to five is a hurdle. Five to 10 is unreal. And it's just, it's that no man's land where you're trying to make all the right hires and you take your foot off the gas because you've got so much other shit going on. Dude, I'm great. The reality is it's all the same, yeah. right? It's the same. Get out of the way, put the right people in the right seats, read traction, Read Rocket Fuel. Those are two great baselines on what you should set up in your organization. And then just spend your time recruiting the right people. Yep. And generating revenue. Now, I do want to add one caveat to that. Okay. And I'm so glad you mentioned that stuff, Keith. You need to inspect what you expect. Okay. So are all these tasks getting done? Are they getting done 80% of the way I would do them? Are they getting done better than I would do them? Or are they not getting done? And what a lot of people do is they set it, forget it, and then they wonder why they have problems. So they have problems because they're not inspecting what they expect. Right. And the reality of this is when you first operate like this, it's very easy to fall back into certain patterns and do it yourself. Here's some of the things that you should look out for and try to guide your team. When you're first doing this and you're delegating these tasks, it is vital to check in often and consistently, okay, until you constantly see the proper result. Once you, if you do this for, let's say, two or six weeks and you're constantly, they're constantly nailing it, getting the same result, you don't have to check in on a daily, daily basis, okay? You don't have to inspect what you expect when they don't get it right away, that's when you need to roll up your sleeves and work with them until they do get it. Or again, you might have the wrong person on the wrong seat. This stuff happens. The point is you want to be almost like a micromanager early on. And once they start proving to you, Hey, this works, then all you have to do is just check in on all the numbers and see if anything's breaking. If it's not breaking and you have certain percentages that you're looking for and it aligns with it, you're good. What's not, that's not the problem in the business or in your production. Okay. 
But if you don't do that, things will run rampant. And then all of a sudden, you're not checking in and things are going sideways and you have no idea why. You have to make sure that your team's executing the way you need them to execute. And the only way to do that is by meetings and consistently checking in and knowing what those numbers and metrics you're looking yeah. for, or we call them KPIs, key performance indicators. Okay. If you're not, if your team isn't hitting those KPIs that you would have hit, there's probably something wrong with the people or the training, or maybe they just don't, don't understand the task at hand. But if you're not doing that, you're not really being of service to your team. You're just telling them to do something and then praying they do it right. And that's never uh, a recipe for success. Yeah. Yeah, what, what gets documented and, and charted gets tracked, and that's important. Because to your point, if you're not tracking those KPIs, then how do you know shit's moving in the right direction? Correct. You know? So, yeah, I love it, man. So takeaways for, for that, right, is you got first and foremost, we've got to get out of our own way. We've got to make the conscious decision that we want to be out of the hustler's uh, seat, first and foremost. And if it is something that you're looking to grow and scale, you have to be, you're going to be forced to go into that CEO role. That doesn't mean you can't get in the trenches with your guys and do work and make sure that they know you're still capable. But the reality is, unless you're just wanting to stay at stalemate, you've got to get out of that. You've got to put the right hat on and, and help your business move forward by delegating the work to the right people in the right seats. And again, if I could go back and redo it, the first two books I'd pick up for many business development are those Rocket Fuel and, and Traction, just because I think they're so easy to understand the, the segment of who you should have as the org chart is concerned. And then you just got to plug and play. And that, and the reality is you'll have some lessons to learn as you're hiring, but it'll be, it'll be a much easier road forward than you wearing everyone's hat. So Absolutely. I appreciate your feedback on this one, man. And this was a good one. I like this comment. Yeah, this is great, guys. Do us a favor. We're doing this for you guys. So please get the word out. Share this with someone that needs to hear it. Like it. Give us a five-star review on uh, iTunes. All right. That's the way we're going to get this message out to more people. And that's the only thing that we're really asking you for. If you need help, we're here to help you. But please make sure that you are sharing this and leaving us a review. Appreciate you guys. And we will see you on the next one.